A very warm welcome to today's special journey showcase that we have for you on our new year in Vienna tour. My name is Natasha Baker and I'm the marketing manager for Golden Eagle Luxury Trains and I am delighted to be joined today by three special guests who are going to help bring this journey to life. So we have, first of all, our expert local guide based in Hungary. His name is George, and he'll be taking you on a virtual tour of the Budapest, which is the starting and end point to this tour. We then have our expert local guide based in Austria, and he's going to be talking to you um, about Graz and Vienna. His name is Marcus. And we're also joined by our leading tour manager, on the Golden Eagle Danube Express train, Andrea, who will be sharing some of the signature experiences that we include on this tour and be sharing some of the photographs that we've taken um, on these previous tours as well. So once we've had a look at the itinerary, we'll then have a look at the train itself and some of the packages that we have available before we answer any questions that you might have for us. So let's just move on to just a brief introduction about our company. So if you've not travelled with us previously and you're unfamiliar with us, Golden Eagle Luxury Trains is the world's leading operator of private luxury rail journeys. We have over 30 years experience and we specialise in offering those once in a lifetime rail journeys to some of the world's most remote and exotic destinations. We pride ourselves in offering a first class service and it's all inclusive throughout. Now the train that we're going to talk about in today's presentation is the Golden Eagle Danube Express. So this is uh, one of two trains that we exclusively operate. It's based in Budapest and it's a Hungarian train. It has a maximum capacity of 64 guests and it has features two restaurant cars, a bar lounge car and luxury sleeping accommodation as well, all of which have ensuite facilities, which we'll show you in a bit more detail later on. So let's have a look at the route itself then. So as the name suggests, we do operate this tour over the new year period. So each and every year, the departure starts on the 28th of December and runs through to January the 5th. And we currently have dates available on 2021 and 2022 that you are available to book at the moment. It is a nine day round trip tour from Budapest and it covers four different countries within that journey. So starting from Hungary, we travel through Austria, through the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and then back to Hungary. And all of the cities that you can see marked on the route map are places that we include a fully guided excursion program within each of those destinations. So the actual journey, you spend five nights on board the train and we have hotel accommodation either side of that journey. So you have two nights in Budapest to start with and then one night at the end of the journey. So let's get started with the actual journey showcase itself. So as I said, we start with Budapest as the start point to the destination. We spend days one to three um, in the city. Day one is always uh, considered an arrivals day. So the only organised activity that we do on day one is the welcome dinner that evening. So you're free to arrive at any point during the day and a Golden Eagle representative will greet you at the airport and transfer you to this beautiful hotel that you can see before you, the Four Seasons Gresham Palace Hotel. So then after you have the welcome dinner, which is an, a great opportunity to meet the rest of the guests that you're traveling with, and also the tour management team, including the lovely Andrea that we've got with us today. Uh, it's a great opportunity. We do encourage you to attend that. Then on day two, once you've had breakfast, you'll enjoy a full tour of uh, the city of Budapest. So what I'll do now is I'll hand over to our local expert guide there, George, who will take you on a virtual city tour um, and hopefully give you a flavour of what you can expect. So over to you, George. Thank you very much, Natasha. Thank you. My name is George. I'm a local guide in this wonderful city. I live in Budapest. 
And um, I'm very happy because um, today I have the chance to speak about the Hungarian capital a little bit. So Budapest or Budapest in English is in the heart of Europe. On this European map, you can find Hungary in the middle, indicated by the star in the middle, and Budapest is the capital of this wonderful country. And this city is quite big compared to other Hungarian cities. Almost 2 million people live in the Hungarian capital, and almost 10 million people live in Hungary. And um, this photo was taken from a hill in the Hungarian capital because the city has two different sides, the hilly side and the flat side. Hilly side is called Buda, and the flat side of the city is called Pest or Pest in English. And between the two sides of the city, there is a wonderful river, the river Danube, with wonderful bridges as well. For example, with the chain bridge, which is very close to the Four Seasons Hotel, this bridge is the symbol of the Hungarian capital, the oldest bridge of Budapest. And um, on the hilly side of the city, not far from the bridge, there is a big building as well as you see in the photo. That building used to be the Royal Palace of Hungary. We usually start the sightseeing tour in Budapest with the Parliament building, which is not far from the hotel, by the way. And uh, this parliament is one of the largest parliament buildings of Europe. Almost 700 rooms are in the building. Of course, the building is wonderful in the evening as well. The most important highlights of the city are wonderfully lit up in the evening every day. And we visit the parliament inside as well, where the local guide shows us wonderful parts of the building. For example, the Grand Stairway as well. It is quite fabulous as you experience. And after this part of the building, we usually take a look at the Hungarian Holy Crown as well, which can be found inside the parliament. This crown is one of the oldest crowns of Europe. The first king of Hungary, Stephen, was crowned the was crowned with the crown in the first half of the 10 hundreds. And of course, the National Assembly Hall is one of the most important parts of the Hungarian Parliament building. This is that part of the building where Hungarian politicians usually work. The Parliament has a big square as well, which is decorated by the Christmas tree in winter in December, the national Christmas tree of Hungary. And after the parliament building, the motor coach usually takes us to the Heroes Square of the city, which is quite important in Hungary. Um, 14 statues of Hungarian kings and heroes are on the square. Close by the Heroes Square, there is a big park, which is the city park of the capital. And the city park is very famous for an ice skating rink in winter. This is the largest open air ice skating rink of Central Europe. And not far from the hero square of the city, there is a long avenue. This is the Andrashi Avenue of the city, decorated by the Christmas lights as you see on the trees. And this avenue it makes connection between the city center and the heroes square of the city. One of the most important buildings of the avenue is the Hungarian State Opera House, uh, which is a jewel box in Budapest, originated from the 1800s. And during our city tour, we usually visit this building as well. So we go into the building where the local guide shows us this wonderful auditorium as well. Look at this, it is quite marvelous. After the Opera House visit, the motor coach usually uh, passes by this building as well, which is the great synagogue of the Hungarian capital. Um, it has two onion-like towers and one of the largest synagogues of Europe, very important building for the Hungarian Jewish community. And not far from the great synagogue, there is a bridge, which is the Elizabeth Bridge of the city. And the coach driver usually drives on this bridge. And with the help of it, we can get to the Buddha side of the city, to the hilly side of the capital. By the way, this bridge is a little bit newer. The original one was destroyed in the World War II. So the present bridge is from the 1960s. On the Buddha side, on the hilly side, we go to this church, 
which is the King Matthias Church on the top of the Castle Hill, very old building originated from the Middle Ages. And um, this Roman Catholic building is wonderfully decorated by the ceramic Hungarian roof tiles, which are 19th century and Hungarian symbols on many, many buildings in Budapest as well. Behind the church, there is a great lookout point to the city, or we can say lookout terrace, which is called Fisherman's Bastion. And um, inside this lookout terrace, there is a restaurant as well. And during our city tour, we have lunch in that restaurant. And after lunchtime, guests can enjoy the great view to the city from the Fisherman's Bastion. It is quite good, quite great in winter time as well, as you see. But after lunch and after the view from this part of the city, uh, we usually visit a hill as well, another hill, which can be seen on the left side of this photo. That hill is the Gallert Hill. And from the hill, the view is wonderful to Budapest. To look at this great photo. It was taken from the hill. And um, on the very top of the hill, there is a big statue as well, the Hungarian Statue of Liberty. It can be seen in this photo. And uh, not far from the hill, as you see, the Elizabeth Bridge and the Chain Bridge also can be seen. So the white is the Elizabeth Bridge and the next bridge is the Chain Bridge. After the sightseeing tour, people usually have free time in the evening, in winter, to visit one of the Christmas markets of Budapest. This Christmas market in the photo is not far from the shopping street, not far from the fashion street, which are pedestrian streets. Um, for example, this is the fashion street of Budapest with very fashionable Christmas decoration, fashionable Christmas tree, as you see. And um, not only trees, not only buildings are decorated by Christmas lights in Budapest. Uh, for example, one of the streetcars, one of the trams of the city is decorated by the lights in winter. For example, one of the, tram, one of the trams of the tram line number two. And if you take the tram, the streetcar from there, you will see the most important buildings of the city because the line can be found parallel to the river on the flat side of the capital. The Hungarian flag is waiting for you in winter as well, ladies and gentlemen, with the red, white, and green colors. And I really hope that this year I will have the chance to show you this wonderful capital in December. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, short, quick online sightseeing tour. And as I have mentioned before, I would like to see you in the Hungarian capital this year in December. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, George. I know it's so difficult to try and condense all of the wonderful things that you can see in Budapest in such a short space of time. So I do appreciate that. And I think it's given everyone at home a real flavor of obviously what they can expect from a city tour with us. Um, and, and as we, obviously it's a short tour that we, that we offer. Um, we, that's why we sometimes do encourage that you can book hotel nights either side of the journey in addition to what we provide. So obviously you can take a great look around at some of the sites that George has mentioned. But while, we've, uh, while we're still in Budapest, it would be only right for us to, um, we've, we're lucky enough to have another Budapest resident with us today, Andrea. So I think it um, would be great, Andrea, if you could share some of your special moments um, that we include within the tour that obviously George hasn't mentioned. And then we can show some of your brilliant pictures as well that you've taken um, on previous tours. Thank you, Natasha. <laughs> First of all, I would also like to welcome everyone at this webinar. Um, thank you for asking about uh, my lovely city as well, mine as well. Well, apart from the beauty of the city George described, I would emphasize the location of our hotel, just opposite the chain bridge, which is really at the doorstep to enjoy the lights of the capital. As we are talking about um, winter tour, the sunset is quite early. That's giving us possibility to experience that special light frame provided by the buildings both sides of the river. 
as you can see in the picture, it's, it was taken not far from the hotel, actually just a few steps. And also down the side street in front of the Basilica, a Christmas market is still on, just two minutes from the hotel with special light show on the church every half an hour. I love the atmosphere of this square at this time of the year where you may discover local craftworks and the lights on the building provide a special scene for those who walk by. Having dinner in our private restaurant room, a truly breathtaking view is our background for the welcome dinner in the hotel, as you may also see it uh, in the photo. But then on our final Budapest day, before boarding the Golden Eagle Danube Express, we enjoy a champagne reception in the Royal Waiting Room at the so-called Nugati Station listening to, to the sounds of the military brass band playing. It is really special way to begin your luxury train journey through the heart of Europe. And then we, we, we go to <laughs> Vienna from, from Budapest. Yes, Natasha? Definitely. No, I was just going to say it's a great way to build that excitement of obviously departing on the train and, and getting it settled into your cabin. And obviously when you, when guests do board the train, your luggage is there waiting for you. So you can just settle into your cabin and then watch the Hungarian countryside roll past us as we start our journey. So as we said, we, we're traveling towards Austria, but we do have um, a tour provided that afternoon in Hungary as well. So um, in a town called Kesseli, we have a short city tour before you have dinner on the first day. And obviously your overnight stay arriving into Austria the following day. So that would be on day four. And we have two beautiful cities that we um, are able to experience in Austria. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome our next local guide, Marcus, who will be showcasing these beautiful cities for you in more detail. So over to you, Marcus. Hello, everyone. My name is Marcus, and I'm very happy to welcome you all here live from Vienna. I was born and raised here and it is my privilege to give you a little insight into the many wonderful aspects the city has to offer. But first, let me tell you a few things about Graz. Graz is the name of the city, which you will see on your journey with the Golden Eagle train before you come to Vienna. Graz is the capital of the Austrian province called Steiermark. The city is situated on both sides of the river Mur. Graz is the second largest city in Austria with around 300,000 inhabitants. The clock tower, what you see here in the photo, overlooking the city of Graz, is a symbol for the city and can be found at the top of Castle Hill. Countless Renaissance courtyards are spread all over the city. And these courtyards were built by Italian architects in the 16th century. Graz is also famous as a university city and made itself a name in modern arts as well. After arriving in Graz, you will be able to join a city walk to explore, explore the city in more detail. Must do while you're there is to try the special pumpkin seed oil. You see here in the photo, this pumpkin seed oil, it's a delicious specialty added to all different kinds of food. It's lovely with salads or added to pumpkin soup or even served over vanilla ice cream. But these are only a few highlights the city has to offer. After leaving Graz, your next stop is going to be Vienna. Vienna is the federal capital of the Republic of Austria, home to 1.9 million people. And this makes it the fifth largest city in the European Union. It stretches from the foothills of the Alps all the way to the banks of the River Danube, which gives it a very agreeable continental climate. Vienna's history as a settlement goes way back before Roman times. The part of town that we call the center of the city used to be the spot where the Romans built a military camp and a civilian settlement 
in the first century AD. The Romans used to settle along rivers to provide themselves with water and to protect themselves, in this case, against northern tribes. Many centuries later, Vienna was imperial residence and home to the famous Habsburg family. They ruled over Austria and Vienna for more than 600 years. Two very famous members we have here on the left-hand side, Archduchess Maria Theresa. She ruled during the 18th century and Emperor Francis Joseph I, who was in charge of the empire of Mattel 1916. In the center of the city, especially in the historical part of town, you find outstanding architectural ensembles dating back from medieval to Baroque times, as well as the 19th century and Art Nouveau. All that is surrounded by the very famous Ring Boulevard. This street houses to the very day architectural treasures like the House of Parliament, for example, the Museum of Fine Arts, the Opera House, the Natural History Museum, the Town Hall, and many others. Here, you have a view over the city with the National Theater in front. On the right-hand side, in the background, you see the Hofburg Palace, the former imperial winter residence of the Habsburg family. And in the background, in the center, St. Stephen's Cathedral, the landmark of the city. Actually, 50% of Vienna are covered by green areas, which is great for recreation. Prater Park, Prater meaning meadow, used to be a private hunting ground for the Habsburg family, was opened already more than 250 years ago for the public. In size, Prater Park is twice as big as Central Park in New York, or four times larger than Hyde Park in London. All around the city, we have the very famous Vienna Woods, a wooded area which is so loved by the Viennese that Johann Strauss, the very famous composer of waltz, dedicated a waltz to this area. He named it Hales from the Vienna Woods. Actually, speaking about nature, we also have a lot of vineyards in the city. Actually, 650 hectares, that equals around 1,600 acres of vineyards are located within the city limits. And this makes Vienna the only capital of the country in the world, not only producing a significant amount of wine, but also using some for export. Austrians, wine lovers, enjoy beautiful white wines. You might have come across the Grüner Wildliner, which is Austria's signature grape. Vienna's wine lovers appreciate the Gemischte Satz. This is a white wine, made out of a variety of white grapes pressed together, sort of like a mixed blend. So I hope when you're here with us in Vienna, you try a glass or two or more when you have the time. Each year, international consultants conduct a quality of life survey comparing in more than 200 cities worldwide, social, economic, environmental and cultural factors called the Mercer study. And we are very proud that 10 times in a row, Vienna was elected number one in being the world's most livable city. Vienna is also one of the four cities with the United Nations headquarters and is seat to numerous international organizations like the OPEC or the International Atomic Energy Agency or the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Traditions are held high in Vienna, and this is the reason we have around 450 ball receptions per year held in the city. They all feature live orchestras and are held in magnificent venues. So the Golden Eagle train offers you this unique experience in the beautiful town hall of the city. How to better spend New Year's Eve than in the town hall waltzing into the new year and making this a new year for the men. If you say now, it's been years I danced the walls, or if you never tried at all, don't worry, we have got you covered. After arriving by train into Vienna, there is a waltz lesson organized for the group where everybody can join in, even if you have no experience in waltzing 
at all. All set for the night, the grand gala dinner at the town hall waits for you, followed by the ball reception, where the Vienna Hofball Orchestra performs for you while you enjoy yourselves on the dance floor. On the very next day, the first day of the new year, a horse and carriage ride is planned for you, will take you through the historic city all the way to Palais Coburg. Palais Coburg is this beautiful residence which once was home to the family of Saxe, Coburg and Gotha. In its historic wine cellars, which dates back to the 16th century, they have 60,000 bottles. Its collection of rare wine is one of the best well known in the world. So after your horse and carriage ride, you will have the New Year's Day brunch at the Palais Coburg. And in addition to that, you will be able to watch the broadcast of the New Year's concert of the city of Vienna, performed by the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, while you still enjoy your brunch at the Palais Coburg. This concert, the famous New Year's concert, the city of Vienna, is held in the beautiful Golden Hall. Every year, 50 million people tune in into this broadcast, listening to the music of the Strauss family and their contemporaries. The unofficial Austrian anthem, the Danube Waltz, will be performed at the end of the concert, followed by the very famous Berdetsky March. Coming back to your itinerary, so after the brunch for the afternoon, there will be two freedom of choice options for you. One, you could go to Schönbrunn Palace, this beautiful former summer residence of the Habsburg family. It was built around 1700s and the inside visit will take you through all original rooms and they are decorated exactly in the way as they used to look like when the imperial family was around. After the inside visit, you might enjoy yourself the festive market outside of the palace. If you've seen Schönbrunn already, then you might fancy a trip to Heiligenkreuz, a monastery, an abbey in the southern Vienna woods, which dates back to 1133. It's peacefully located there. It's about half an hour's drive from Vienna. So this would be also an option. And this monastery is still active to the very day. Both those bring you back to the railway station that you can continue your journey with the Golden Eagle train. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention and your time. All the best from Vienna, and we all hope to see you soon. Back to you, Natasha. Thank you very much for that, Marcus. Let me just get back here. They are two spectacular cities to obviously visit at any time of year, but I think the fact that you go obviously at this time when it, they're festively decorated and so beautifully um, decorated with all the lights and the Christmas markets, it just makes them even more special. And obviously Marcus picked up on some of the signature experiences that we provide in Vienna, in addition to the sort of standard city touring. So for example, the waltz lesson that we provide and obviously the New Year Ball, which is uh, an incredible experience. And it's these sort of signature experiences that really highlight the itinerary and make them lasting memorable um, me memories, obviously from the journey. But obviously as an individual traveler, you may find difficult to organize yourself. So these are really what make our tour stand out. And we have some pictures now that obviously Andrea will talk us through that she's taken from previous New Year in Vienna tours, obviously just again, illustrating some of the experiences that Marcus has just mentioned. So Andrea, I'll hand over to you. If, if you can just share with us some of your uh, favorite standout moments from the itinerary as well. Thank you very much. To be honest, it's so hard to pick because we have so many special moments. And um, even though we do not spend an overnight in Vienna, we are celebrating the coming year at the famous New Year Gala at the town hall, as uh, Marcus mentioned. And being part of that Sylvester Bowl, maybe dancing a waltz at the dance floor, watching the program and the debutant, then having a glass of champagne and toast for the new year at the balcony of the Grand Ballroom, watching all the fireworks 
works of the city is something to remember for a lifetime, I believe. We have more highlights along the tour, but for, for some of our guests, this is the top one, I would say. Um, after that quite impressive experience, the following morning, we take a horse-drawn carriage ride on the absolute quiet streets of the city. I believe this is the most peaceful time of the year where we are carried around um, like Vienna was ours. And if we have the luxury of having snow around, it even seems like being in a film of the 19th century. It's, it's a truly amazing experience, uh, I believe. It, it looks spectacular. And sadly, we can't obviously guarantee the snow, but I mean, even if there wasn't any snow, it's just to be able to have that experience in Vienna where there really isn't anyone else around and obviously being um, transported by horse and carriage is really ma magical. So obviously from Austria, we leave then to continue on towards the um, Czech Republic and then on to Slovakia. And obviously with it being a short webinar today, we don't have the time to really go into great detail of the history and culture there as we have done with um, Hungary and, and Austria. But obviously these places that we visit are equally as special and they have their own unique charm. So Andrea, can you just show us through some of your highlights from the, the final part of the itinerary? Yes, of course. Um, let's begin. <laughs> With, uh, with the legendary Czeski Krumlov, um, which is one of my favorites, to be honest, with its historical UNESCO listed quarter. You may immediately fall in love with Bohemia, seeing uh, this uh, really lovely town. It's like walking through a book. We start the sightseeing overlooking the town center, as you can see in, in, in the top picture. Uh, then we walk down to the old part of the city, where from we may wander around, led by our guide or individually, discovering the cobbled stone narrow streets or bridges over the Lutava River, going up to the castle, where, if you wish, you can even climb the 162 stairs of the tower. I know it may sound frightening, but I promise if you do, a wonderful view will appear in front of your eyes. As, as you may see, it, that picture was also taken by me from there. If you don't, still a similar scenery can be discovered and seen by everyone as towards finishing our tour, we are passing by a lookout terrace too. Again, as this is still a silent time of the year, the place is not overcrowded. Also, we start to map the town in the morning hours. Because it may get pretty cold, we always have a sort of base at the center, a cozy cafe shop where you may return anytime during the sightseeing or after you take a stroll or your shopping. We end our sightseeing walk at the other side of the old quarter, saying goodbye from another angle, um, which is also um, magnificent. That picture was taken from, from uh, the end of our tour. And leaving this uh, magical town, um, we will arrive after our lunch to Prague. Prague itself could be an individual showcase uh, as it is so rich in history, sites and interesting uh, spots. What we try to provide on our journey is to give you a special favor of the city, like when you have a degustation at a Michelin star rated restaurant, we can still have the taste of the Christmas market atmosphere arriving to the capital and we are welcomed with a special dinner in the municipal house, which is the cultural center of Prague. Therefore, our evening meal is followed by a private concert there. And after that, we return to the train. And the following day, the whole day sightseeing tour, we start with a journey on the historical tram of the city 
where we enjoy some accordion music and hot beverages. I, I love the feeling of approaching the castle this way, where we discover the famous St. Vitus Cathedral. We have the opportunity to enjoy a fabulous lunch in the Lobkowitz Palace, afterwards visiting the church and its surroundings, where you may walk around and see its collection of paintings, uh, musical instruments, china work or arms exhibition. From here, we get an exceptional view of the capital as well. Um, the right uh, picture was taken from its terrace. Um, and generally in the afternoon, we offer different ways to enjoy the sights further on with guides who walk with you to the other part of the city through Charles Bridge, which I would never miss to do. This medieval stone arch bridge is quite uh, tasted by time. And even though it looks almost black, provides the real Middle Ages impression, which is so rare to experience nowadays. Uh, you may see uh, the statues and the tower, how, how black it is uh, in this picture. Well, having dinner on the train, we continue our journey to the next country, Slovakia. Uh, we arrive in one of its cities to Košice in the morning. Košice is a place where probably you would never go by yourself. It certainly has a sort of Eastern European atmosphere and charm. The streets are wide, but still village-like. And meanwhile, you may feel poorness somehow. The buildings show a strong and rich historical background. You can actually touch contradiction at this town, which I, which I love. I believe our concert in its cathedral is another unique experience there. After visiting Košice, we are heading back to Budapest for our farewell dinner and possible extension days. As you could hear from George, Budapest has a lot to offer, so it may be worse to add extra programs to our rail journey at the end. Where this is where we actually end the tour in Budapest, returning to, to the starting point of our tour. No, oh, fabulous. I think it's just such a short overview, but it hopefully will give everyone an, indi an indication of, of what they can e expect from a journey. And uh, as Andrea mentioned about the extension programmes, we can assist you with that. We can obviously assist with booking additional nights and excursion programmes. So please do let us know if that's something that you want assistance with. So obviously that's the journey as a whole. You've seen obviously what we include in terms of the itinerary. But if you haven't traveled with us previously, then we, as I mentioned at the start, we are an all-inclusive operator. So our packages are fully inclusive from the moment you arrive with us um, in Budapest to the time that you depart. So we include everything from breakfast, lunch and dinner daily. And that starts with the welcome dinner on day one and ends with breakfast on day nine. All of your alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages are also included within the price. We include the private ensuite accommodation on board the Danube Express train, which we'll speak about in a moment. As we've spoken about, we provide expert-led excursions in small groups, so you'll have a local expert guide like George or Marcus traveling with your individual group, which will be no larger than 25 guests in total, and you'll have that private experience of, of traveling around those destinations. And then as Andrea was speaking about, the, we offer these VIP experiences that really, really make the trip memorable and obviously are difficult to organise independently. And the itinerary includes three hotel nights at the Four Seasons Gresham Palace, which as we've mentioned is fantastically located right opposite Chain Bridge in the heart of the city. And then some of the further inclusions that we provide, all gratuities on and off the train are included. We have an attentive cabin attendant service on board the train, 
to provide tea, coffee, snacks within the comfort of your cabin. We have a UK registered doctor on board the train, which just gives you that peace of mind that obviously any um, medication or, or treatment that you may need can be administered straight away. And we have luggage posterage offered at both the start and end of the journey. So all of that's taken care of for you. 4G Wi-Fi is a question we get asked a lot about. We do have this service on board and it does rely on a cellular signal, but within Central Europe, we do tend to get a, st a relatively strong signal in all of the cities that we, we visit on board the train. And of course, you have the experienced toll management team that travel with you throughout. So what you can expect from the train itself. So as I mentioned at the start, the train has two restaurant cars and a bar lounge car, as you can see pictured here. So this is a bar lounge car decorated for Christmas. It's a fantastic social heart of the train where you can join the fellow guests either before or after dinner to enjoy obviously the scenery that's, um, that you're traveling through and you can have that there. We have the restaurant cars that you can see pictured here where we serve either lunch or dinner depending on the destination that we're traveling through and breakfast is always served within the restaurant cars as well. And then in terms of the accommodation we have two types of accommodation on board this train both of which are on suite as I mentioned earlier. The deluxe class compartments are, are the entry-level compartments for this train. As you can see, there's some really comfortable seating as you come in. This is the daytime set out. So you've got comfortable seating there with two picture windows within your cabin. So it's really bright and airy. You can watch the scenery go by from your cabin. This window here opens partially as well. So you can lean out, take photographs and also feel that fresh air within your cabin. This here is the ensuite bathroom, which obviously contains shower, toilet and wash basin. You also have a single full length wardrobe here for storage and some additional storage located above here. So the cabin itself is 83 square feet in size and there are five cabins in each carriage. It also has individually controlled air conditioning and heating in your compartment, so you can adjust that to your preferred temperature. We also include premium toiletries, the robe and slippers within the room and a hairdryer. And then when you're at dinner, the cabin attendants will come into your room and transform the room to the evening bedtime configuration. And in deluxe class, that's converted to two, what we consider in the US as twin size beds. We then have the superior deluxe compartments. And as you can see, a very similar layout to the deluxe class. We have the comfortable seating area during the day. We also have an additional seating area here where you can enjoy tea and coffee provided by the cabin attendants. In terms of storage, you have a, a double full length wardrobe here, as well as the additional storage here. And what we do encourage guests to do is unpack all of your belongings, obviously, at the start of your journey. And then if you would like more space in the compartments, we can store your suitcases at the end of the carriage, which you can obviously access at any time, but it just allows you more space within the compartment. As you can see, we've got a larger ensuite bathroom here as well. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an indication of the compartment size. This compartment is 93 square feet in total, so it's larger than the deluxe and it includes all of the same amenities that I mentioned previously. In terms of the evening setup, it has a US queen size bed instead of twin beds. So that's the major difference really between the two cabin sizes. But in terms of everything else, everything is fully included for all guests. So this is our current price list for 2021. And we're also selling 2022 departures at these rates for a limited time. So if it is of interest, then I would definitely encourage um, booking early to secure these prices. So to give you an indication in US dollars, the tour starts at 12,895 per person. And that's based on two adults sharing a deluxe compartment. Or if you're a solo traveler, then that would be a single supplement of 19,395. 
um, for the deluxe class and then we have the superior deluxe class prices there. The deposit is required um, to secure your cabin, which is re required within the first seven days of you making your reservation. And at the moment, you can take advantage of our flexible depo deposit policy, which allows a fully refundable deposit up until the 31st of August, at which point then our standard terms and conditions apply. So that's it in a nutshell. If you would like more information on our, on the journey itself, on the accommodations that we've mentioned, then please feel free to download one of our tour brochures from the website to get more information. And you can also arrange a free Zoom consultation with our sales team. And we can do that at the time convenient for you, Monday to Friday. So please feel free to get in touch with us by sending us an email at mail at getrains.com and we can gladly arrange that for you. So as I mentioned, we're all available to answer any questions that you might have. Obviously, hopefully we've provided you with enough information there to give you an indication of what to expect. But please do use the Q&A function below and I'll be able to point any questions to our panel that we've got with us here. So the first question that's um, come through is about the New Year's Day concert in Vienna at the Symphony Hall. So obviously I'll, um, I'll invite Marcus back here just to speak um, if he's available here. Now, the answer, unfortunately, um, from our point of view is we, we can't obtain tickets. I'm just wondering if Marcus, you can explain just how, how the process works for, for ticketing for the New Year's Day concert, because I know it's not quite straightforward, is it? No, it's a very special thing. Also for me being Viennese, it's almost impossible ever in your life uh, seeing that concert live. You have to apply through the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. So you contact them, then you're set on a waiting list, and then they draw like a lottery, and you're either chosen or not. But everybody, please do feel free to try, and it would be a once in a lifetime occasion. It's certainly very difficult to to be able to do that. But we hope that the obviously the experience that we offer at Palais Coburg is, uh, you know, it's still a very very special experience. The fact that you can be there in that atmosphere and in the pictures that obviously we showed earlier of that experience. Uh, sadly, it's obviously you're not there live, but that it's as close as you can can be. And obviously, as Marcus said, it's extremely difficult to be able to obtain those um, tickets. But hopefully that's answered your questions. We also have another um, question here, which, which I'll start with. Um, I'll start with George first because it applies to both of the cities that we spoke about. Um, George, when do the Christmas markets end in Budapest? Are they still obviously they're still live whilst we're there? But when do they end roughly? Um, roughly, it ends around on the first week of uh, uh, January. So after New Year's Eve, it is still opened on the first week of January. That would be the that would be the last last week of the market. It starts in 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 December, usually on the first week of December, or at the end of November as well. Sometimes. So if obviously if, if guests wanted to experience Christmas markets, we would recommend them to go to maybe have a couple of additional nights at the start of the tour, and then they can go and explore those. Yes, 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 okay. exactly. Thank you. And and Marcus, what about um, in in obviously in Vienna where we have a bit more time? So Christmas markets normally start middle of November. And they last individually to the 24th, 25th, but as the Viennese like to party, so they transform into New Year's markets, hooray. So there is an option still there. Most of the markets still are operating over New Year up on the 6th of January. Perfect, no, that's, that's a great way of extending that experience, definitely. So we have a question here, Andrea, which, uh, oh, go on, sorry. No, no, just to add, when we are in Prague, the Christmas market is still on, so we have the possibility to enjoy that one as well. Even indi individually, the guests may walk around 
And in Kosice, we don't really have enough time, but arriving back to Budapest, also the markets are on, but certainly in Prague, they still may enjoy it. That's it's really nice because even though obviously the Christmas markets, they're all still European, they're so different. I think you'll still get a bit, you know, a unique flavor of each city and each market. So that's definitely worth knowing that we can visit at least three Christmas markets on during the trip. So the last question we've got here, um, Andrea, I'll point this one to you. Obviously, it's just asking about the type of wardrobe that's recommended on the train. Obviously, we are traveling at New Year, so maybe you could say about the dress code, at the New Year in Vienna, but uh, the New Year ball, sorry, in Vienna as well. Sorry, <laughs> I just said problem. It's okay. Um, well, um, you you have to wear at least a black suit. We, to be honest, sometimes we were traveling with that, but um, generally a gown is recommended and evening dress for the ladies. It's really a fashionable ball and uh, you may come in other uh, dress as well, but to feel the atmosphere, to be convenient uh, even to have a dance uh, uh, on the on the dance floor, I think it's it's really recommended to uh, dress properly there. And what about the rest of the journey? So obviously, when they're traveling on the train, what would you suggest if people tend to dress for dinner, or is it casual throughout? It's it's rather casual, so it's really up to them. Uh, but because it's a celebrational time of the year. Generally, according to my experience, especially on this journey, uh, it's, a it's a bit more dressed up, but there are no requirements at all. Especially if we have dinner just after sightseeing, then we just go into the, di into the dining car and we even don't change. Um, so there are no requirements on the train. Perfect. But now that's thank you. Thank you to, to George, Marcus and Andrea for answering obviously all of our questions and being part of today's webinar. I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope it's given you a great overview of what is to come from this journey. And we really hope to see as many of you as possible on board the train and um, this year or next year. We just can't wait to be back on the rails and be operating our tours again. So we look forward to seeing you very, very soon and take care, have enjoy the rest of your day.